and begin! Yes, Miss Marvel is finally among us, and I'm gonna talk about this series episode by episode because I just really love this character. And the reason I love her so much is because she's probably one of the most relatable superheroes I've ever known. Because she's a superhero who loves superheroes. She's a fan, just like me. And ever since I really got to know her in that Avengers game that came out a couple years ago, I have been really excited for her introduction into live action in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So this is your spoiler warning. Since episode one has been released, I'm going to be talking about this episode in detail, recounting the events. So you've been warned if you have not watched this episode yet, or you don't care, you should probably not watch this video. And with that, let's do this. I'm so excited. I really love this character. <laughs> Miss Marvel. So Miss Marvel is the seventh series in the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Phase 4 on Disney+. Plus. It's the 12th installment overall in Phase 4 so far. And as far as the entire official MCU is concerned, it's the 35th installment overall. Yeah, 35 official Marvel Studios titles and still going strong. So Miss Marvel introduces Kamala Khan to the MCU. She's a young Pakistani kid living in Jersey City. She's a junior in high school. She's a super fan of the Avengers and Captain Marvel in particular. And one day she gets superpowers of her own. And so her adventure and origin story builds from there. This is going to be another six episode series on Disney+. And the first episode titled Generation Y dropped yesterday. So let's dive in. All right, first thing I'm going to say is I'm going to give all sorts of praises to Iman Vellani, who plays Kamala Khan. Because right out the gate, the very first thing that happens in this first episode is this little fan film, and we get a voiceover from her. And right instantly in her voice, I was like, that is Kamala Khan. She is the super fan that I remember from the Avengers video game and those Marvel Rising cartoons. In my opinion, Iman Vellani perfectly captures everything I love about Kamala Khan. She completely embodies that character. She is Kamala Khan. Yeah, she's great. You picked a good one, Marvel Studios. So like I said, she's a junior in high school. She kind of stands out from the crowd because she's socially awkward. She only has a couple of close friends. But really the biggest thing that the beginning of this episode really showcases about her is that she constantly has her head in the clouds. She's always daydreaming and I actually really like how it's visually represented. Like first thing you see is when she's in the car and we see like a paper cutout of Captain Marvel flying among the Jersey City skyline. That was really cool. I was like, oh, so she's like Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. Kind of, sort of. She just has a very vivid imagination. I especially love that scene where she and her friend Bruno are riding on their bikes and they're talking about what finishing touch they should put on her Captain Marvel cosplay. And we see all these different animated designs going on on the buildings behind them. That's just really creative. I've always loved scenes like this. Cause A, it shows just how imaginative Kamala and her friend Bruno can be. And B, it shows that she and Bruno are really on the same mindset. They are really good friends. And yeah, all right, I'm gonna break the rule and talk about Bruno. I know, we don't usually do that, but I'm gonna do it. Cause I actually ended up really liking this character, Bruno Corelli, played by Matt Lintz. He's really cool, he's kind of a tech head, and yeah, he totally does level with Kamala Khan. I would say he puts up with her crazy, since obviously he's not as batshit insane about the Avengers as she is. I mean that in a good way, by the way. But putting up with is not the right phrase for it. But you know what I'm trying to say. I really like that scene where they're sitting on the rooftop and he's like, you're Kamala Khan. If you want to save the world, then you're going to save the world. And just for a minute there, I saw their eyes look down slightly and I was like, okay, there might be a spark there. And I just found that adorable because they snap out of it. And even Kamala's like, oh, uh, what was that? I found it cute. I'm a softy like that. And also, here's one other thing about Kamala Khan that separates her from the rest. Because unlike a lot of other superheroes, Kamala Khan actually has parents. And, you know, I guess growing up in a Pakistani family, there are going to be some strict rules in place. Her mother, named Muniba, I hope I'm saying that right, she's the one who enforces these rules. And it is the classic story, you know, she doesn't want her kid going out late. She doesn't want Kamala to have her head in the clouds all the time. Classic high school mother story. Whereas the father, Yusuf, is a little bit more of the rebellious type, which I actually like about him. He's pretty cool. Although the scene where he comes in all dressed like the Hulk and he's like, we're going to go to AvengerCon together. And Kamala's like, no, I don't want to go with you because it would be so humiliating. He honestly should have figured that. Yeah, when you're 16 and you're going out with friends, you don't want a parent chaperone around. This is like common knowledge, so I don't understand why he got all butthurt. He should have known. He's still cool, though. 
And so the Khan family gets this package in the mail from some relative of theirs, I don't remember who, but this is where that bangle comes in. So, all right, Kamala Khan's powers and origin story are different here than they are in most Marvel lore. In the Marvel lore, Kamala Khan is an Inhuman. I covered this in my video about the trailer for this series. She's an Inhuman, she was transformed by the Terrigen Mists, and she has stretchy powers like Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four or Elastigirl. But here in the MCU, that's just not the case. Instead, her powers come from this magic bangle she puts on. So now my mind starts running. All right, what's the story behind this thing? Is it a family heirloom? Does her family have a history of cosmic powers or something? I don't know, but I am curious to find out. And this happens when Kamala and Bruno sneak to AvengerCon, which, oh my goodness, so many cool things to see here, including actual Marvel merchandise. I paused on this frame and I was like, oh, wait a minute. They're pulling a Shazam. We see the merchandise and the Marvel logo is right there. I was like, it's official. Marvel Entertainment officially exists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You remember Shazam did the same thing with DC with the Batman toy. Whether that was a slip up or intentional, we will never know. But anyway, yeah, this is when Kamala first discovers her powers. And again, like her origin story, they are different than what most people know them to be. Instead of stretching her body, she now creates hard light. I guess that's what they're gonna call it. She's creating objects out of this cosmic energy, not unlike a Green Lantern. It does look cool though, I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, I don't have too much of a problem with this power change, because honestly, they nailed everything else about the character and the vibe of the show. And besides, you can tell that the writers and creators of the show, they know. They knew they were gonna get some backlash about this power change, and they wanna keep it as true to the source material as possible, but they do have a reason for this power change. And we definitely see that when she saves Zoe by stretching out a big hand. That was awesome, I gotta say. When I first saw that, I was like, yeah, all right. So honestly, I imagine that most of what she does power-wise is gonna be involving, you know, stretched out limbs, just not her actual limbs, but hard light limbs. So it's like her powers in the MCU are a mix of her powers from the lore and Captain Marvel's powers. That's what I'm getting out of this. And you know what? I can roll with that. And if you can't, that's totally fine with me. I get it. I understand how passionate hardcore fans can be sometimes, but I'm just telling you where I'm coming from. And I thought it was cool. And then she gets home, she gets caught by her mother, who's all like, Kamala, that was a really bad thing you did. Good night. And she just leaves. Pretty sure she would be grounded after that, just saying. And then she looks at her bangle, she says cosmic, and that's the end of the episode. All right, well, you know what? Not a bad start so far at all. This first episode is actually getting a lot of high praise from critics, which I'm really happy about. Miss Marvel is a really important character in the Marvel Universe, especially in this day and age. Not only is she a person of color, which representation, that's a great thing, but she has that youthful excitement in a world that's just waterboarded with superheroes everywhere. They're such a huge part of pop culture, we have one now who showcases that love that fans have for them. Again, very relatable for me. So I loved this first episode of Miss Marvel, and I am definitely looking forward to seeing where it goes from here. Six episodes, week by week? Oh yeah. So, Miss Marvel, episode one, Generation Y, which, that's weird. Kamala Khan is not Generation Y. That's me, I'm a millennial. Kamala Khan, she's a Zoomer, Gen Z. But in any case, have you watched this first episode yet? I sure hope you have at this point. What are your thoughts on it? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.